Awesome. Every day, all day. This, 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 this is how we roll. This, 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 this is 97.9. What's up? Welcome to the Juice Crew. Okay, so this is this is the show every night, nine to eleven on ninety-seven nine. The box. Welcome. You say your last name Juan Villarreal, right? Yeah, that's how they say it, Villarreal. But that's they, perfect. Not, you said that's how they say. It. Is that right? <laughs> well, no, it's it's Villarreal. Villarreal. You know what I mean? yeah, no, Villa, like a, like a, like a Villa, like Pancho Villa. Yeah. Villa. Villa and then Real. Villa Real. Yeah. Perfect. perfect. That's how you oh my go? God! Thank you, man. <laughs> I used to do. I used to do uh, go on stage, and everybody would chop up my name. You know what I mean? Everybody. They would say Juan Juan Venerio. That was the one that I hated the most. Day. I ain't. I ain't got no Venerio, man. With it. Oh, no, no, no way. But Juan, right. how have you been in this whole pandemic and everything? I've been uh, really lucky because I did a Zoom show for a tech company, and. Then they referred me to another one and then to another one for morale. And those pay $2,000. I don't put my money out there in my business, but I'm just saying I was, I, I got really lucky. You know, I got really lucky and I could, some people can't do comedy into a phone. And I try to help other people. Like, I don't even go do comedy in no phone. I'm like, all right. And I'd go up there and do an hour and then like 30 minutes of Q&A. And it was great. So for so, you, it's not a lot different, like doing comedy virtually and also, you know, in person? Oh, no, actually, it's easier because my material flows. And I know when the, like, I've been doing this so long. So well, I, I just do comedy. I tell my joke, man, dude, and I do the voices. I swear to God, th that little Michigan, I, man, I do not play that. Okay, so now I have nobody yelling or screaming or waitresses because, you know, we pay attention to all that. So now when you just do it on the phone, I'm just focused and... Right. Like, yeah. The waitresses during the show. Juan. Yeah, I do. I mean, man, there'll be 500 people out there, and we'll notice the three people that ain't laughing at us, and we'll see the waitress that's talking the loudest, and we, yeah, we know. If, yeah. if you don't laugh, does it, like, make you nervous? Or you're like, damn, all right, I got to come hard with the next joke. Or you're like, no, nah, whatever. Like, you read the entire room. It doesn't matter. No, because it looks like the whole room is going, ah. And I'm like, okay, maybe he didn't hear it. This is what we think. Maybe he didn't hear it. Maybe he didn't understand it. Maybe he's going through it. Maybe it was too real. Okay, whatever. So I'm going to hit him. Maybe he wants something darker. And okay, maybe he wants something lighter. And then when you got him, that's when you just point him out like, ah, I was waiting for you to laugh, bro. I've been doing 30 minutes. Finally, you laugh. You know what I mean? Like, so, oh. okay, we're preparing for a comedy show. Do you like... you? Like, is it something like you prepare like that day or you go with what's on top of your head or is it like- No, that's a good question because uh, a lot of comics, a lot of comics uh, think that I freestyle because I, that's how I do my comedy. Like I've never written nothing down. I write a subject, okay, this Joe, well, I'm gonna do this, this. And then I just, I know how to do it. And, and I practice at home by myself, hey man. and. My poor wife, she gets it. Sometimes I do an hour in the living room and she'll be like, yeah, that's, that's funny, that's, that's kind of okay. And sometimes she'll just be laughing so hard, we'll both be laughing and it's, it's fun. But, you know, I don't waste the stage and people say that, hey man, you freestyle and, and you freestyle. And I'm like, listen, bro, I sell out shows. People, I sell out shows all over the country. People wait in line to buy my tickets. They, they show up, they dress nice and everything. I'm not gonna go up there and freestyle and practice material on them. This is polished. It looks like that. You know why they call it freestyle? Because sometimes something will happen and I can make fun of that for a few minutes or for the whole night. You know what I mean? I can just call it back whenever I want to. Like yeah, that's why people think. But like, oh my God, he's a genius. <laughs> and I'm like, no, no, bro, my credit is all fucked up. No, I'm not a genius, bro, no. <laughs> it looks fun. Also, we have a sold out show, Hennessy's Comedy Drive-In Event. Sold out in 48 hours, too. In your hometown, wow. Houston. How, how do you feel no, about that? No, no I, I, it's exciting. Like, like, I'm just happy to be on it. I, I'm, I'm, I'm part of it. You know, I love Ali and then Ricky Smiley. I, I did some touring back in the day with him. He looked out for me. So I'm just really lucky. Like, there's so many Latino comics in Houston, in, in Texas, in the game. And for them to ask me to do it and, you know what I mean? It was just, I'm, I feel lucky. 
really, really lucky. Have you ever done a drive-in event like this? No. No. I've never so, been to one. I've been to a drive-in movie, of course, like one time, but I'm yeah. excited for how it's going to be, too, because I've never seen anything like this. No, I know. And, and people say, because uh, I talked to J.J. Williams, uh, J.J. from The Sim, and uh, he said that he did one. I was like, did people honk at you? Because I heard they honk at you or they flash the lights at you when you're funny, when they're clapping. Hey, that's a good and I'm like, really? He's like, not really, man. He goes, they, they had chairs and they they sat outside their cars. Oh. They were spaced out. And I'm like, I wonder how, because they did a concert, like Baby Bash and all that, whatever, and they wanted me to go at a drive-in. But when I saw the videos, I got to go because everybody was up at the stage. It was like, it's like, it's like all the, the 800 or 1,000 people that win were all right there within 100 yards, man. Like, yeah. So we're going to make sure to keep it safe, of course. And it's definitely going to yeah. be safe because it's a Hennessy event, too. So I'm really excited. Oh, yeah. Yes. And, and do, are people going to stay? Because people are asking me, are they going to stay in the car? Honestly, or? I'm not sure. But I'm pretty sure they're going to stay in the car. But maybe oh. not. I don't know. It's going to be my first time, too. So we're going to have to find out together. But I like yeah. the honking and the flashing lights ideas. I think maybe, like, flashing lights if they like it, honking if they don't. But that could get crazy. <laughs> oh, I know, man. You know, some, 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 some people got, you know, louder horns than other people. And <laughs> Yes, yes. And a lot's been going on, obviously, of course, in the world lately. So has there been, like, any, you know, there's been natural disasters. There's been silly trends. The election, of course. Has there been any moments for you or anything that's happened? You're like, this cannot be real. This is crazy. Oh, what I see, what they say? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, a lot of what? <laughs> Tell me what. you like. <laughs> Are you serious, bro? Like, did he just say that? Like, uh, you know, but that's that's the thing. Like, I don't do no politics. No? I don't do, I don't do no current events. Like, you're not going to hear nothing. When I go on stage, I can do an hour and 30 minutes, and I tell people, listen up. Uh, this is everybody's on my team. This is a comedy show. We're going to have fun. And, and I don't do no politics, no, nothing divisive, and I can do that. And then, you know, uh, I've I, I been killing shit. I've been doing this for a long time, okay? So I could... My stories can go on. I'm a good storyteller, and it, it rocks, and I love it. And it's got the crossover. Like, when I did Indianapolis, you know, Indiana, they were so afraid. They were like, hey, man, uh, the crowd is so diverse, so we don't know what to do. And I'm like, what do you mean? Like, we've never had a crowd this diverse. And I'm like, I'm from Houston, bro. Like, our crowds are diverse. What? This is Indiana. There's black people and white people here, bro. That's it. <laughs> I, like, I saw two Mexicans at Walmart, like, yesterday, and I hugged them. <laughs> hey, what's up? He got no hey, come here, bro. And, and I hugged him. Like, we hugged each other. And I even said, like, hey, where's everybody at? Where's all the Mexicans? And I promise you, that dude looked around and went, shh. Hey, we're everywhere. We're everywhere. <laughs> Speaking of Juan, you know, it's also Hispanic Heritage Month, which is awesome. So Hennessy is toasting to our Hispanic heroes. And has there been, like, any Hispanic comedians or people growing up, you know, that you looked up to in entertainment? Oh my God, of course, Paul Rodriguez. But what really wanted me to do a comedy was Eddie Murphy Delirious. You know what I mean? Because I we saw that and uh, we walked uh, about five hours to get to my uncle's house and we saw Delirious. And my uncle doesn't like comedy, but he left it there. It was me, my little brother, my dad, and my uncle. And then like the next week, I went and recited that whole thing at a garage with all my cousins and stuff. So. Right there, I, I had a little niche for it. Like, I could do it. But then when I saw Paul Rodriguez, a Latino, and going, hey, man, and, and talking in you know, Spanglish, and I was like, whoa, that's, that's the king. And now he calls me, and he, he's got a script that he wrote for me. Uh, we're uh, we're like cool. That. Like, like, that's like one of my heroes. And he calls me, checks on me. I call him, texts him. He texts me back, hey, what's going on? And, how is that being like homies with your hero? Because that doesn't happen to barely anybody. <laughs> you know, I, I really, really feel lucky. I, I, I work really hard on trying to be a good person. I've made mistakes. I've talked, you know, mess before, but not, not bad mess, just real mess. Like, you know, you, you saw me rock that? Wow, who rocked that? I'm like, well, well not you. I was there. <laughs> why, why, why are you asking me? I was there. I'm that dude that's like, hey, bro, like, hey, you did it all right, but, <laughs> or, or, well, if you rock it, I will go on stage and say, oh, my God, like. 
real. Yeah, yeah I, I, and I love that. As a comic, as a comic, you love to see a comic in front of you killing it, like I do. Some comedians are afraid of that, they're intimidated, you know, because it depends on what stage of the, you know, their comedy career. Some of them are headliners, some of them are great features, and you know, so I love, there's nothing more than to see a comic killing in front of you. And then you're like, okay, I'm gonna ride this wave, I'm, I'm, I'm ready. Yes. Or, or, or someone getting booed. That's the next best thing. What happens if you go up after someone who pretty much bombed it? Oh my God, I love it. Do you do I, or do you think that you still get a clean slate? Or do oh you my God. I, 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 there was a guy in Atlanta that I worked with, I won't say his name. As a matter of fact, Ricky Smiley was uh, the headliner and he had me out there, you know, featuring for him. And they put a guy up there and he got booed for like four minutes. Like, boo, and, he, and then he was like, y'all quit playing. So I'm on the side of the stage laughing my ass I'm like, oh my God, this dude doesn't get it. And, and, and he goes, quit playing. I'm like, I don't think they playing, bro. Like, so. <laughs> They, they, yeah, they booed him really bad. And then I went up. They threw me up right away. And I, that's the first thing I said. I was like, like, and you know, back then I was, how can I say this? I, I spoke differently. You know, I used words every now and then, you know. Hey, what's your, you know, all my buddies, what's up, Charlie Murphy, everybody would, you know, say the N-word to me, whatever. Like, what's up, what's up, what's up? And so, I, you know, so I, I would say that. So, I, I said it on stage, you know, for for like ten years, and people would freak out. Like, said it. like, like, how do you say that? That's why Tupac ran up to me because I said it at the comedy store in California, and Eddie Griffin goes, "Watch this, did this a real? Watch this." And I went up there and said, "What's up?" I did that, and this one dude said something, and I was like, yeah, "Please." And boom, I got a, the Shaq was there. Christopher Darden, the OJ prosecutor was there. A kid in play was there. Joe Torrey was there. Everybody, a whole lot of people. John Singleton was there. A lot of people. Tupac, and, in the beginning, Tupac? Yeah, Pac, Pac came up to me and he's like, nigga, where, where you from? I'm like, I'm from Houston. Are oh, you from Houston, man? Goes, man, you real. And I said, you Pac. Oh, and he was like, Oh, He's like, yeah. he goes, I ain't never, I ain't never seen you. Know I mean? And then he said, "You know the ghetto boys," and I didn't, but I said, "Yeah." What? <laughs> so you know, we kicked it a few times with Eddie, but that was the thing. I would, I would say that you know, what I mean, that word every now and then, and it, I don't know, I, I don't know. The the thing that got ugly was when reporters were asking me after the show in front of people. You know, you know, I was the only Mexican at the show. So, it, you know, I'd be 200 black people around me signing, taking pictures, whatever, and reporters would go up there like, how do you feel about saying that? Like, you don't think no one got offended? How, like, I'm like, no, if they did, they wouldn't be standing here. And if somebody had a problem with it, I'm sure they would have told me. Like, I, I, don't, I don't even realize I said it. I'm, I apologize for that. Like, I grew up in the hood, fucker. That's how we talk. And my <laughs> man, so... When that guy in Atlanta got booed really bad, I went on, I went on stage and didn't say nothing for about 20 seconds. I was like, I was like, look, man, I'm being real. I was booing in here too. And boom. And I said, woo. I was basically going, boo, boo. And I said, he said, y'all quit playing. I was like, these playing? Those are real boos. I said, he was standing up there like he boo proof, like, I ain't gonna do nothing to me. Like, just, they booed him hard for like three or four minutes. You don't know what that's like. That's a long, long time. I was looking for screens to pull. I told him, I was trying to close the curtain on the dude. Like, I'm plunging shit, bro. And then, you know, I, I rocked it. Any, like, you never, that's never happened to you? Never had a bad experience like that? What's been the worst one you've had, maybe? You no, know, uh, the first. I guess the, the worst one was when I was really young in the game and I got booked at Austin High School and I was so young. I was like doing comedy for like five months and they offered me $75 and I had to follow David Raybon, who, you know, was one of my mentors who got me started at the Hip Hop Comedy Club and then uh, Jay Lamont and, and Billy Jones. So they, these were all polished comedians. So they went up 
and I'm the only Latino, and the, the gym is full of Mexicans, nothing but Mexicans. And they all went up and killed it. They rocked it. And then I went up there, and I, I went to Milby. Milby's a rivalry. So uh -huh. I went out there, like, what's up? And they were like, what's up? They were happy at first. And then somebody else, like, what school you go to? <laughs> I said, I went to Milby, bro. And, and then they booed me for about 30, 40 minutes. And what? I, and then I, they're not. I would have been yeah, out of there. I was hood back then. And I said, well, you know what? I do. Right? <laughs> this, this school sucks. You know what I mean? I made money off my school. You I, I, and they ran and knocked down a little, little karaoke speaker they had because they didn't even have like a sound system at the time. And yeah, man, when you said okay, you know what? And then I had a car. I had a car that wouldn't turn on because my ex-wife was with me, and I, I was like, "Let's go, let's go!" And we tried to go, cause, and I parked like three blocks away because like we were really poor at the time. I just started, and I had a, a yellow Hornet. Right. Look up that car Hornet. It looked like a tank. It's a big ass ugly car, and it had no manifold. So when you turn it on, it brrr, brrr, it was like Fast and the Furious noises before they they even knew what that was, and and then we got to the car and it wouldn't start. Like it was like the battery was like oh my god. So now the students are walking out and they're still booing me. No, I was getting booed, I was getting booed in the car. The car wouldn't come yeah, on. You know what I mean? Boo! That's him! I did boo! <laughs> <laughs> my, my, my wife, they're still booing you like I can hear them well right. you overcame that situation though what made you not say like oh, I don't want to give up like I'm just going to get better I'm going to keep going oh no no I, I was going to give up like because I was trying to be a cop I wanted to be a police officer I wanted to be a detective I had already carried a gun for five years I was commissioned working security I made some big arrests I was on city under siege a show back in the day where I assisted officers and everything so as a matter of fact, I was going to do that, but they wanted me to go to college and be undercover. And, and that's, I was like, are you serious? And I'm thinking, okay, I didn't get to go to college. If I go to college and be like 21 Jersey undercover, and then I get to, you know, get my, my schooling. Cause this was 88. This was eight, 1988 when they offered me that. So I was 22 years old, I was really young. I was like, man, I, I could do this. I, I could do this. And, 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 you know, I told my ex-wife, whatever, but then I had my cousin, I got a lot of cousins that were cops. They came and said, bro, that's the worst life you can think of. And I was like, what? He's like, you're going to you're gonna be friends with these people. They're going to look out for you. They, 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 they look out for your family. They, you know, they got money, bro. They're going to look out for you. You're a cool dude. And then you're going to have to get them all and break up the family and then send them to jail. And they're going to move you. And you, you know what I mean? So they all, they talked me out of it and said, Go make I was like, all right. <laughs> so they said, go, no. What, what are you going to do? Like, I'm probably going to go tell Joe's next week at this club. It's like for amateurs, yeah. open mic. Yeah, and then I went and did, I did open mic. And then eight months later, I was on BET and HBO. <laughs> eight months? Eight months. In eight months, I was on HBO and BET. I was on BET first with DL, JB Smooth, and Pierre. That was That's the first time I was on TV. very often. Like, I feel like, how the hell did you get to that? Maybe you, you had... Oh, because really? I was performing in front of an all-black crowd at the hip hop with Rushon McDonald, Steve Harvey, G. Anthony Brown, and David Raybon, and I was killing it. So all they wanted me to do was have five minutes, and I had about 15 minutes. In eight months, I wrote about 15 minutes, where you know, I had 15 minutes of stuff to say. So they loved it, and I guess they wanted a little diversity, and they said, "Hey, man, like," and and they took me there. So they they loved it. It worked out. It worked out great. I did it 11 times. I'm the only one who's done BET 11 times. What? Yep. That's I'm the only one, you know, that's not a host. You know, the host, you know, they've done it a lot, but I'm the only one and they, you know, gave me a thing, congratulations. They, they love me, man, it was cool. So did you face like any challenges being a Hispanic comedian or like you, things were pretty smooth for you? Like people like to, you know, have you on the build. It was diversity and everything. Oh, yeah, no, I, that's the thing. Like I was so easy, I was rocking, you know, rocking crowds. I was being me, and I wasn't stepping on nobody's stuff. Yeah, you know, it's like it's like when you have four Latinos on a show, it, it's gonna be hard because they're all gonna talk about a lot of the same stuff. So when I was on tour, like with Steve, Steve would take me on some shows, or G. Anthony Brown, they loved it. Oh, you gonna follow Juan? Cool. Yeah, you know I mean, uh, Bruce, Bruce, Arnes, J. DC Curry, some more, Adele Givens, you know, they were all, come on, Juan, Eddie Griffin, all of them, come on, Juan, come on, Juan, I want Juan. So I was working, like, 
you know what I mean? One night with Cedric in Atlanta on a Tuesday, Wednesday I'd be in Arizona with like uh, Eddie Griffin and then, you know, third in Chicago with Arnez J and then DC Curry, I was just, yeah. And it was fun for them and it was fun for me. So it was cool. I have one, okay, what's well, my last question for you before we do the drops and all that stuff. Um, okay. Do you think that like there's a difference between doing comedy like on Instagram, like those people who make those like quick videos and stuff versus like doing a real set? Yeah. It, yeah, but uh, it doesn't mean they can, they can uh, not do comedy because a lot of comedians hate that. A lot of comedians, they, they hate on them. And I'm like, bro. Ooh, that's why uh, is it really like, I, I feel like they can't hold their weight when it comes to a real stage just because they're on Instagram. Like, you know, and it's Yeah. Cool. You know, and some of them can. A lot of them can. <laughs> and, and, and they know that a lot, of them, a lot of them can't do that. But a lot of them can. They just got to work harder. And because, you know, we have to win crowds over. Like, it'd be 3,000 people there to see Adele Givens and some more. And they'll say, okay, man, give it up for your opening act. Y'all don't mind seeing them on BET, whatever. Because they will say, y'all y'all, y'all ready to see Adele? Some more. All right, but first, we got to listen to that. Y'all give it up for one. Ah! You know what I mean? Yeah. So, so they're like, who the hell is this? And then they recognize me. So, and then I would have to kill them. So, you know what I mean? Okay, yeah. when, a, when an Instagram guy becomes popular and has the following, and he goes to a comedy club, it's his fans. They already know what he does and what he talks about. So they already, they the already you know, are like. You really? Huh? The, like the room is already there for them. Those are their fans. Yeah, it, it's their fans and, and they're waiting to see them. And, and, and I, but I love it. I love that a young comic at home on the phone or going over here doing dances and play, playing pranks like are you on tiktok I, love it. I tell the other comedians bro if we were young and we wanted to do that we would say man forget them old ass comics <laughs> yeah. like what, what's the problem there's enough room for everybody bro like I love it. there's enough room so, for everybody. yeah and i help out a lot of those guys you know chinna do he's, he's a good friend of mine chingo bling start doing comedy i told chingo bling you need to start doing comedy uh i mean i i told a lot of a lot of people. A lot. I've helped out a lot of people. I'm not a ghost writer, but I tell them, look, you should say this, do, do it like this, or do it like that. Thank you, man. Thank you. And is, there, so, is, there, is it ever possible that someone that's a comedian, you're like, man, this is not for you. Like, you are just not funny. <laughs> like, what would it be like if someone just could not do it? No, I, I tell them. I'm like, hey, bro, like, you're not funny. Like, you... Or like, like you, to, no, no that, that's why people love me because I'm like one of the realest, yeah. And I'm like, hey, bro, listen, uh, you you're likable. When you walked on stage, you said, "What's up?" Your appearance, you got a good look, you got a good stage presence. That they, they loved it, and then and then you started telling jokes, and and, and they went really bad. <laughs> so you're not funny now. It's, it's just gonna, you can be funny. I'm not saying you're not gonna be funny. I'm just saying right now you're not funny. You gotta find yourself because you're jumping around. You're mixed, you're, you're not funny right now. You need to talk about stuff that you know about, stuff that you, you mean, cause some comics are, some comics that I used to work with, I don't care. I'm like, bro, that joke is not funny. They never laugh at it. I don't care, I'm gonna still do it. I'm like, but you don't understand. I don't care if they don't like it. and. Those comics ain't in the game no more. Yeah, you know I mean, yeah. So it's like, cause we do this for the fans. Some comics are so selfish. I do this for me. It's funny to me. I don't care what they think. Like, well, you ain't gonna pay you. <laughs> like, you know, this is business. This is show business. They come together, show business. And these dudes, I don't care. I don't care. And then you know, disrespecting ladies and doing stuff like that. It's like. Like, bro, like, you don't have to do that. You can be funny. I mean, and there's comics that are hard, like Corey Holcomb. Corey Holcomb says, to, says things on stage that I could never say. But when I see him, I laugh my ass off, like, because Corey loves me. Corey's like, you know, on this podcast, he's like, the funniest Latino in comedy is from Houston. The funniest. Like, he went hard and said, well, but he's a gangster, whatever. And, and he gave me a lot of love. So it was really cool. So you think it's not cool when people are like, if a comedian says something that's maybe offensive, they're like, oh, you're canceled. Oh, yeah, that, that could be. No, no. Uh, 
because like if a comic is not funny and he's gonna work five shows with me i'm like you you gotta do some stuff and i will give him an hour of my time to go sit in this room or come to my room okay dude, how are you gonna do it do this or whatever and they're like oh my god like it it's just so easy for me so they take their notes and then they practice it and then it works and then they find their little path they want to go to because some comics want to be mad on stage some comics just want to be silly some of them just want to run around and dance and stuff which is funny like it don't matter do whatever you do as long as you're entertaining people and they're laughing at you that's our job Juan, I can't wait for you to entertain us at the driving comedy event Hennessy presented. I know it's going to be lit. So people before are saying my nervous, I'm like, bro, this is I'm fun. This is gonna like, be I'm gonna it's cars, trucks, boats. Too. Huh? It's gonna be like a new experience for everybody. For you, yeah. first time you this, everyone else yeah. too. So I can and I'm gonna say some funny stuff, so they they gonna laugh. Like I told them, I can go to a hotel and have everybody looking out their window and put a speaker in. They can quarantine themselves in the room, and I'll still rock that shit. Like, <laughs> Yeah, I've been working hard, and I'm excited about this. Big names on the show. So, yeah, I'm not going to disappoint. It's going to be awesome. Thank you so much, Juan, for taking the time out to do the interview, too. I really appreciate it. Thank um, you so much. And thank you for asking great questions, because I do interviews with people sometimes. And oh, you're like, uh-uh. <laughs> they'll ask something that's a yes or no question. Like uh, They don't really like, want to talk. Like, no, you, you say, explain it to me. So you want them to talk and, you know what I mean?